Boko Haram insurgents in Nigeria's northeast are still waiting for the gratuities of the fallen heroes months after the Nigerian army promised them a prompt payment. A Premium Times investigation in April exposed how the military abandoned the family of Sunday Oji, an officer who died on the battlefield in 2015. It was the same treatment for the family of Sunday Samuel, who died in a, an attack by the insurgents in Meduguri, Borno State, in 2017. And as such, some widows of slain soldiers now engage in production of gari, a Nigerian staple food made from cassava for survival, while the kids of many have been dropped out of school. And to discuss the welfare of officers and veterans and their families, we have in the studio Ambassador Roy Ohideve. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, quickly, share, let's talk about the, your assessment of welfare of uh, soldiers generally. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. You see, um, many years ago, when I left the army, I saw soldiers, they go on protests on the streets. People say, old soldiers. Some of them fall down and die, and the news go viral. And social media was not so effective, yeah. you know. But um, to me, it was just a norm until I began to travel around the world. And I will see veterans are given excellent um, treatment. They are accorded priority placement. And when I came back to Nigeria, I had to join forces with those that started to make a face. And um, the assessment has been so poor. If, if, if you want to rate it, you'll be surprised that um, there is no concern. And the, the surprise borders down to the fact that generals that are retired, yeah. that are in government, don't even, you, you expect that they will feel more because they had these guys working under them as generals. Then coming out of the military, Army, Navy, Air Force, and finding themselves into government, they just go comatose. And it's so shocking. And it's, it's not the first time that we're hearing of such, you know. So why do you think this has continued over time and nothing, you know, seems to have been done to fix or to change? Yeah, I think um, the veterans neglect is part of the predominant um, Nigerian catastrophe. And um, it borders down to the fact that um, there is no human rights concerns. And this our lack of human rights concerns is a, is a, is a fallout from the in, in ineffective governance, you know, and we expect that they should start somewhere. So everybody should start somewhere. Like in the military, if you go to the finance department, the finance is supposed to collect and compute what is due to yeah. every soldier. If you fall down in battle, if you lost your life, what is due to you, your families, and at a good time, you know, so the Ministry of Finance is supposed to make funds available. So all of these um, responsible decks fall out from their responsibilities because there is no hard drive of um, expected um, um, performance. Yeah. And this is sad because some of those that hold those responsibilities are also serving soldiers, serving military personnel, and those that are in civil are working under military instruction. So you would think that this... Um, this poor cold shoulder to certain demands, is it not clear to the government that it's affecting the morale of the fighting troops? Is it not clear to the world that one of the issues of insecurity in Nigeria is because of the poor motivation of those that died, those that um, retired, and those that are serving? So why don't we put our eyes on the ball and apply the right um, activities? We are aware that you have a meeting uh, sometime today to discuss on uh, the welfare of uh, veterans. Uh, but before that, we have a, a quick uh, report, you know, that we're going to watch together, okay. um, done by Felicity as a week. She, of course, uh, had a conversation with a widow uh, some time ago, and uh, we'd like to hear what she has to say, um, and of course, uh, how she has been coping over her time. We'll Thank be right you. back. Around the world, the death of a spouse in most cases bring up challenges that often undermine the quality of life of those left behind. For women, the world calls them widows. My husband was a first man, and we were living in Barak because the government gave us three more and uh, six months to pay almost two million. 
and the job, I'm a teacher by profession. I'm in a low rank officer. I became a widow when I was 47 years old. And my husband was sick for good three years. And the family abandoned me and my husband. My first son was in 200 level when I lost my husband in 2009. At 2009. So I, have, I can't discontinue the education of the child. Their family said it's none of their business. The government can come to our aid. Your lady, he said you cannot be giving fish, fish, fish. You have to teach, teach somebody how to fish so that by tomorrow that person will not stop. If they can help us raise a little money for us to be trading so that we'll be able to take good care of our children. It's a pretty uh, sad uh, video. Um, it's, it's not the first time you're hearing about things like this. I'm sure that you must have seen or met you know, women like this in the past. What would you say necessitated your call for improvement of uh, soldiers' welfare? You know, you know, when you listen to such videos and you see the pain and the desperation, you begin to wonder, those of us that have, have gotten opportunities to run our own businesses. We carry a lot of this pain. Do you know? There was a soldier that died, a veteran, that died last, um, last month. Do you know the daughter called me? Daddy is late. I said, okay, carry him to the nearest military hospital. He's a veteran. She got there and said, they asked me to pay 60,000 Naira to put him in the morgue. He's dead. He's the government's property. You know, so some of these women too, they are thrown out of the barracks. Because of the backlog of payments, you are seen to be overstaying your time in the barracks. So you are asked to leave because other soldiers need the accommodation. So these are our organizations like Remenaf. We come into play in all of these situations. I ask myself, there is a body for widows especially military widows, by the federal government, known by the federal government. But you, we talked about system failure yeah. right now. So because of system failure, that body has not been able to deliver. So I ask again, what is wrong to say if a soldier passes on, one or two of the children will be given federal scholarship to study to any level in uh, academics? Yeah. That can be a help to such a woman she can't come out and be so passionately desperate if she knows that one or two of her kids are enjoying government opportunity to go to school. And the, the earlier they get matured in academics and graduate, there can be a lifetime support for her. So there are so many inputs one can do to remove all this desperation. Yeah. But we wonder, we still wonder why we are at this level. Something you also spoke about earlier, um, in the U.S., you know, the, the, the treatment for army veterans is entirely different. There's a lot of clips that you uh, might see of, you know, veterans who are, are shown the utmost respect. Even um, during the pandemic, I think in the earlier uh, weeks of the pandemic, there was a, a U.K. Uh, army veteran that was uh, knighted by the Queen for his own service and generating millions of pounds um, uh, for um, COVID-19 and health workers. Um, but it's not the same thing with Nigerian veterans. Um, that respect, that honor is not given to soldiers and people who have sacrificed their lives and, and you know, their whole, all of that they could for Nigeria. Why or how do you think we can build um, that respect for, the, for Nigerian soldiers? Okay, um, I, I was in California last year. I went to see a veteran, he's a friend. And I saw they were packing his things out of his house. My mind just went to the fact that he couldn't pay his rent. So I was like, is it your rent? He said, no, 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 no. That he was in the Air Force. And when the planes are flying through this place, it gives him trauma. So he, he told the social workers that he can't stay here yeah. because it affects him. His doctor has seen that it affects him. So they are moving his house to a more quiet area where you won't have that trauma. So you, you come down to Nigeria, you will see that when, when you retire from the military, you are just left off the hook. Yeah. And the pressure groups that we have formed have been able to draw the government's attention to so many of these needs. 
you know, and previously they gave us medical. And if you go to the hospital for medical, you are only allowed to do malaria treatment. Every other treatment you pay. Like I went for a eye treatment and okay, I was in the bomb squad in the army. I was in so many other engagements. So many others faced deliberating body um, harms and injuries. Now you go, you want to do diabetes, you want to treat for high blood pressure. Most of the drugs you buy, they will tell you they just have one, yeah. then you buy the rest. So from where? The pension. The pension has not been upgraded to the minimum labor approved and this thing. And so many other issues. We have the debarment allowance, which was just recently released. And we saw that they did only 2017 till date. So why are you telling me the other soldiers, their skills gained in the army should be used against the states? Because that allowance is supposed to stop you from using your skills gained in the army, in the military, to use it against the states. So the, the whole issue of the protest that we called off was to look at that again. And the mini Honorable Minister of Defense have called a committee up now yeah. of um, about nine or so military generals serving and retired to say, let's have another look at all of this. And I'm sure that is going on right now. You know, so, so many things you push and pressurize for. But we plan to do things legitimately. That is why we are calling these honorable lawyers to, to receive them today. Barista Falana will be there in Unilag this morning and so many other legal luminaries to look at these issues and see how we can use legal processes. So we don't come out like other civilians and start making protests and creating violence and discord. Is this in any way different than in the Nigerian police force? Uh, are they treated better or different? Yeah, but in my research, I had to go for one or two meetings of the retired police officers too. What they face is worse than what the military is facing. Just recently, last maybe within this month, I heard that they have been approved to go on medical also. So what will be the content of their own medical if the military is crying for this? So all other agencies, especially the police, yeah. if the, if the post-service um, service, um, um, recognition by the government, by the community, is not encouraging, I'm sure those serving will not look towards going out and waiting for government. They will be helping themselves. That's what is happening in the army too. So I think the police also have been speaking for them most times. And this is one other opportunity to say we have neglected the police force. The policing that we have today is just from the concept of humanity that so many police officers are just trying to live up to expectation yeah. because by right, what is due to them has been fully and completely diverted. What do you hope to achieve after the activities uh, for today? And what, do you, what would you say can be done immediately to end this uh, neglect of uh, officers and uh, veterans? Okay. Now, when, when we called off the protests, they paid up like um, two, three months areas that have been owed, and they said the debarment allowance will come upon deliberations by the committee set. Yeah. I know how many committees have been said to have been set, and the committees go comatose. So when I had that and we agreed, I came out from there, I went into my think tank, and I called some of our colleagues together, I said, let's have... A, a kind of seminar. Let's call some legal luminaries together. The secretary of the Nigerian Bar Association, um, Barrister Joyce Odua, will be there also. So we want to engage this set of people and say, what is by law right for us to do to get this thing sorted out? Because if we can get the Ministry of Justice into this, so many things will be enshrined in the constitution of the country, not by us asking and crying for it. And once we can get that done, it becomes a model for every other agency. So the army should, the military should take the lead. And from today, rising from this, our session in Unilag today with these legal luminaries, we are going to try to draw up a paper where it will be presented to the Honorable Minister of Justice to see how the judiciary can come in and say, this is an injustice to humanity. And that is the statement. Interesting. Ambassador Roy Ogiwe, thank you so much for you speaking much. with us. Yeah. Looking forward to having a follow-up interview when, of course, you can give Excellent. us feedback on what, must be, uh, what has uh, been done. Excellent. Thank you so thank much. You, sir. Yeah.